Uh, welcome to the Sheldon McLeod Show. It is Monday, Monday, the 11th of July. Welcome to summer week, though. Welcome to our program. Leah Batstone is the producer of the Sheldon McLeod Show. We're going to start off our uh, show this afternoon. Again, thank you so much for uh, well, finding a little bit of your afternoon to spend it with us here today. Uh, our next guest has uh, been writing about some concerns that she's had for quite some time. She's been blogging about it on her own web blog. Uh, she has environmental sensitivities. Uh, her name... Uh, Wendy Kearley, and uh, she's a lifelong Nova Scotia resident, a senior citizen, and a woman who happens to be diagnosed with severe disabling multiple chemical sensitivities. And this has uh, some implications, some ramifications, given what government is asking her to do to get more for this story. Uh, we reach out to Wendy and, and say good day. And hi, how are you? How are you feeling today, Wendy? Uh, great, Sheldon. Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be able to tell your story. Whereabouts uh, in Nova Scotia do you live? I live in New Glasgow, northern the, Nova Scotia. Northern Nova Scotia. Uh, this this story that we're about to talk about this has to do with uh, your environmental sensitivities. Tell me, when were you when were you diagnosed with multiple chemical sensitivities? That was in 2012. I was uh, diagnosed at the uh, Integrated Chronic Care. It's an environmental clinic in Fall River. So this diagnosis, what does it mean? Uh, it means that. Um, Multiple chemical sensitivities is an inability to uh, process chemicals, like everyday chemicals, anything from uh, cleaning products to scented hair uh, products or, you know, lotions to um, exhaust from cars uh, and even uh, chemicals that trees and grass give off. Um, those are some of my, uh, you know, worst ones, mm -hmm. and um, it can be anything. And, w and what it does, it, it, uh, because we're not processing it, it is building up in our bodies, causing it poisons us um, a to, to a toxic level where uh, organ systems are damaged, like your digestive system, your breathing, your uh, neurological system, meaning your cognitive function, your you get neurological pain in your, you know, the rest of your body. Uh, and um, myself, I can only eat 10 different foods, and they have to be organic, no pesticides, because I react badly to pesticides. So um, it, that's, that's what it is. And actually, there's a recent study done for the National Institute of Health in the U.S. Uh, in March of last year that states that it's a... Uh, uh, neurodegenerative disease like ALS and Hodgkin's disease uh, Wendy, or Huntington's disease. Like Huntington's, sorry. yeah. Uh, Wendy Kearley is uh, here. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, 2012, this was diagnosed. Did, yes. that, did that come as a relief? I, I ask that knowing that people who have had similar conditions, and I've heard stories where you, you weren't entirely sure what was wrong. Um, so tell me about, you know, what did that diagnosis mean? That was a big relief because then I knew what I could do to not necessarily, it can't be cured, but you can lessen the damage to your body by avoiding chemicals. So my immediate response was, uh, well, take myself off all pharma, pharmacological drugs because uh, they, they add, their, that's uh, part of the chemicals that we can't process. So there's no, no treatment of illness with, with uh, painkillers and things like that. Uh, so I took myself off all of those. I removed every scented product from my house and I started cleaning only with vinegar, baking soda, or peroxide. I, um, what else? And I, I switched my toothpaste to... Um, to using coconut oil and baking soda, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a total, a total change. And within about a year, I started to feel an improvement in my cognitive function and a lessening in the neurological pain. But with a, an exposure like going outside, that is negated. Again, it's back full force. So, uh, um, you know, exposures will do that no matter whether it's going outside or whether you have somehow gotten some of that uh, toxin in your house or your home. Yeah. Do you go outside? No, I don't. No. 
this uh, story that that came to my attention. A few people were sharing your blog post. Uh, you've been living in a home uh, through. This is a home that uh, is what through Housing Nova Scotia. This is a subsidized home. Yes, it is. Yes. And how long have you been there? I've been here since 1989. So you've been in that same home since the diagnosis, since you started trying to weed out all of these these chemicals that were that were affecting your quality of life. That's correct. And actually, before I was diagnosed, I never was into scented products. Anyway, I don't don't use air fresheners or any. They just never it never made sense to me. If your house smells clean, what's better than that? <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's that said. You know, you've been in this home. It's it's scent free. Uh, you, yes. I assume that you can function within your own home without uh, without reactions. That's correct. Right. Yep. Uh, when did you hear from Department of Community Services? Uh, when did I hear? Uh, about the move, that they wanted you to move. That was probably about three years ago. That, so the, and prior to that, they knew that I had this illness. So they could have uh, um, made an attempt to maybe build me something or, uh, who knows, retrofit something. or, But... Um, they didn't do that. Hmm. They want you to move. They want you to move out of your home. That's correct, yeah. Uh, have they, I, I see the word eviction. I see that's in this story. Have they actually that's, given you an eviction notice? Yes, I have uh, an eviction notice for July 31st. So you, you were told to what? Move, uh, do they say where you need to go or where you should go? No, no. Back in uh, 2014, they offered me two places, but neither of them met the medical requirements set down by the uh, clinic in Halifax. So, hmm. the why are they asking you to move? Because I'm overhoused. Um, the clinic has advised I need a two-bedroom unit, um, and I have a three-bedroom unit. So, why do you have a three-bedroom unit? I when I moved in here in 1989, I had three children. So now that uh, the nest is starting to empty, they're saying you need to move. That's correct. Yes. And they've given you to the end of July. That's correct. Uh, there, there seems to be a groundswell of support. People have been writing to the minister, Honor, Honorable jo- Joanne Bernard. You've been having some people stand up saying perhaps they're going to call out uh, Housing Nova Scotia for doing this. Have you? heard anything further? Is there anyone who's been able to cut through and and get an answer as to why this is so important that you need to be moved from this home where right now you appear to be healthy, you appear to be able to function? Um, No, there hasn't seemed to be anybody. Like the the, uh, one one, uh, representative for uh, housing in Nova Scotia, our Eastern Mainland Housing Authority told uh, someone that called on my behalf that they didn't feel I was sick as I said I was, even though I have medical letters that say that I am that ill. Mm. Uh, what What about moving to another place? Is it possible to, to have a, another home that's as clean and as, as scent-free as where you are right now? Um, in a perfect world, I guess it would be, but uh, I live on... Um, uh, what to call it, CPP and, OA, uh, and old age security, so I can't afford much. Um, I'm in a, a community, and uh, I've had people out looking for places for me for uh, months, and there hasn't been anything that has met with those requirements. Um, uh, so where do you go? To move, move into something that I can afford, like in a, a, a duplex or a uh, whatever an attached home that isn't recommended by the doctor, mm-hmm. there would be scents from previous people living in it. There would be scents co- coming through the walls, like through electrical outlets and plumbing, and through the shared air spaces. That would make me extremely ill, and advance my condition to you know who knows what. Maybe I wouldn't be able to eat anything at all, because that is what has r- limited my food. To ten is exposures to chemicals. The multiple chemical sensitivity. Is there any treatment or cure? There is no treatment or cure. It's a genetic disease. Um, and uh, sorry, just a minute. No worries. Yeah, um, yeah. There's no cure at all 
that uh, the only 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 thing they can do is total avoidance of uh, uh, ch- chemicals that trigger the reactions. Mm-hmm. And when I say reactions, uh, it's not like a reaction, like an allergy reaction. This is actually uh, doing damage to everything in my body. It's you know I have difficulty breathing and um, things like that. So it's it's not like uh, getting a rash from an allergy. Well, aside from, you know, the the story that we've all heard about the, the bubble boy living in a plastic bubble, really, uh, the place you're at now is, is proven safe for you and it's proven to not trigger your, your insensitivity. Exactly. Status. That's exactly it. So um, the, what is the point in moving someone from someplace that they're safe to someplace that uh, the uneducated think is safe? Well, Wendy, it sounds like um, your story is starting to get some attention. I hope that uh, the people in a, in a position of power and authority are, are listening, that perhaps uh, it, it, this doesn't make sense to, to force you to move. So No, it doesn't make sense. Hmm. And, and there has to be some compassion out there uh, for people like us, like the, uh, the, uh, the upset would be extreme if they were requiring a paraplegic to move into a building with no elevator and no stair and, and no ramps, mm. so um, why why would they be moving me when I'm, they my doctor says it's medically not safe for me to move? You know, it's it's no different, it, and uh, I I really can't see uh, uh, compassionately how they could do that. Well, Wendy, uh, thank you for sharing your story on your blog post and for coming on the radio to talk about it with us. Thank you, Sheldon. I really appreciate it. Right. Good luck. Yep, thanks. Bye-bye. Wendy Kearley is her name. She lives in the New Glasgow area. She's been living in the same house uh, since 1989. Uh, and it is through uh, Housing Nova Scotia. So it is, uh, in some ways, it is um, you know, part of the, the system, if you will. And Housing Nova Scotia says, well, kids are out, so you don't need that much space. Uh, so you should move out. No, it's not you should. You have to move out by the end of July. Um, well, it is a rather... Troubling story for this woman and for her family and her close friends. And there is this blog post that we told you about, and they are soliciting uh, some help and support by asking people to contact Nova Scotia Housing's CEO, Dan McDougall, or to get a hold of Honorable Joanne Bernard, the Minister for Housing and Community Services in Nova Scotia.